Welcome back to part two of our series where we are starting our wonderful journey into the world of Microsoft Azure. So what did we cover in our previous video? Well, in our previous video, we basically broached the topic of cloud computing. Now, cloud computing can mean a lot of different things depending on how nitty gritty you wanna get into it. But at this point, hopefully you came away with at least a high level understanding about what it is, what are some of the benefits, who are some providers of it, and just common things to think about when we start exploring our project. So now that we have at least a high level overview, we're gonna move over to the next topic, which is creating a Microsoft Azure account and understanding things like resource groups, understanding things like services and subscriptions. So I do have the presentation again, so we're gonna be leveraging that a little bit. And then I will be at least walking you through what the installation process is. I can't necessarily follow it uh, at every point because I already have an account and every time I try to log back in, it's just gonna redirect me back to the Azure portal. So I won't be able to necessarily take you through the entire process, but I tried to document every step I could using the documentation that Microsoft provided. So I'm hoping that is enough to get everyone through the process if you don't currently have a Microsoft Azure account. With that being said, let's jump to PowerPoint. I like this blue a lot. All right, first topic, subscriptions. So just like Office, Microsoft Office, there are different types of subscriptions. With Microsoft Office, you have a home and office subscription, you have a student subscription, you have a business subscription, and then there's even enterprise licenses. So different types of subscriptions or licenses, whatever you wanna call them, have different benefits. So for most of you, I'm hoping at least, Microsoft Azure is something that's new to you. If it's something that's new to you, I'm gonna highly recommend you sign up for a free subscription. A free subscription includes a $200 credit to spend on any service for the first 30 days. Free access to the most popular Azure products for 12 months. I have to provide the link. I don't remember what they are off the top of my head. And then access to more than 25 products that are always free. So supposedly there's 25 products I guess you can always use. I don't know what that means in the terms of you're probably still gonna be billed for using them, but I don't think you would have to pay for those products. So that was at least the feeling that I had when I was reading it. So this is a great subscription, like I was saying, for anybody who's new to Azure, you just kind of want to explore it or you're just trying to get started with it. You do need to provide your phone number, a credit card, and you need a Microsoft account. So it's very important that you have that information ready when you're going to go and sign up. You have to have the credit card. You just can't do it without the credit card. Now, I will tell you that supposedly they don't charge after the subscription expires. So like the $200 credit and stuff like that, you wouldn't technically be charged as long as you don't upgrade the subscription. So the minute you upgrade the subscription, you're basically saying, I want to be charged now in order to keep using some of these services. So just keep that in mind when you go to the free subscription route. I did it, I think it worked great. And then what I have now is the next subscription, which is the pay as you go subscription. So the way this one works is you basically are billed monthly for the services that you use in that billing period. Now, depending on how you set up your particular service, sometimes you're billed based on the usage, sometimes you're billed based on just basically, oh God, what is the, what's the word for it? It's like you're basically like taking a portion of it, like you're, you're dedicating like some resource to it. You're basically like taking a fixed amount. That's the way at least I try to, I can't remember what's can't remember it. But anywho, the pay as you go on your build monthly. I personally, I mean, I have, I don't know, like five services or six services. I just actually subscribed to two more this morning. So it, before I subscribed to it, it was, I think like $30 a month. It's probably going to be closer to 70 or 80 now. So, you know, it is what it is. I, I do a lot just because obviously I do tutorials on it. So this is a great way where, you know, I can help you guys explore certain topics without necessarily having to invest in it first. So I don't mind doing that. But um, I personally think the pay as you go one, that's most what you're gonna go after your free subscription. There's enterprise agreements. Again, this is for 
like actual corporations, I doubt any of you are going to fall into this category. There might be some students out there. Um, if you are a student, there is a student subscription. So it is kind of like a free subscription, but you don't get as much credit. And then uh, the nice thing is you actually get, uh, what is it, uh, like 12 months. You get 12 months to use your service. And then also you get some more uh, free services after that. Um, and then you don't need a credit card at sign up. So students, for whatever reason, you get some type of pass, I guess, with that. I guess students can't have credit cards. But then on top of that, you do need to make sure that you have an organizational email address. And so uh, this would be something that, you know, if, you know, I went to UCLA, so I have a UCLA email. I don't know if they check to see if it's active or however that works, but um, I would assume that if, you know, it's if you're not a student anymore, then it probably wouldn't be validated. So just again, keep that in mind when you're going this route. <clears throat> okay, so now that we understand subscriptions, how do you create an Azure account? Well, this is the part where I'm gonna take you as far as I can. It's not very far. And then I'm just gonna list all the other steps that you need to do. So the first thing that you need to do, <clears throat> sorry, I have to clear my throat, um, is you need to go to Microsoft Azure. And so if you go into the link into that presentation, it's on the GitHub repo, you should be navigated here. And then from here, you'll notice this little button called Start Free. And so once you do the Start Free, you're gonna be redirected. Now, this is where you would be prompted to uh, sign in with your account. So once you sign in with your account, it needs to either be a Microsoft or a GitHub account, and then you can create a free, basically you're gonna create a free subscription. So when you sign in, you're basically gonna be doing the free option, and then by default, you're gonna have a, a, a free subscription, at least for the time period allotted. So you need to either have a Microsoft or a GitHub account, and then walk through that process. So you need to sign in, and then additionally, you need to provide some information about yourself. So obviously you need your name, so your first and your last name, your email address, and your phone number. Depending on your country, you might see additional fields such as a VAT number, no idea what that is. Once you've provided that information, select next to continue. And then on the identity, sorry, identity verification page uh, by phone screen, select your country code and type the number of the telephone to which you have immediate access. So this is how they're gonna verify you. It's like two-factor authentication. Hopefully that's, you know, not a, a stranger to moaning people these days. You're gonna be text a code, uh, obtain that verification code, select the relevant button, type the code in the verification code box, and then select verify code. Once your identity has been verified, you need to agree to the terms and then also provide your credit card information. So at that point, you need to provide your credit card information. And then uh, after you agree to the terms and privacy statement, you can go to step, well, what's supposed to be step six, it's step five. You can then go to the Azure portal. So at that point, you would actually have everything you need to sign up. So it's, it's honestly not that bad of a process. It's really straightforward and it's super easy. Normally when you have to pay for things, it's always a super easy sign up process, but who would have guessed? All right, so let's take a look and see what does the Azure portal look like? Oh, well, mine looks a little different than what you're gonna see, but I did this on purpose. So you can actually customize what the Azure portal looks like or what page you arrive at when you log in. So I am currently on what we call the dashboard. So the dashboard is basically what it is. It's a dashboard. It summarizes different topics and you can customize your dashboard to you know, meet the needs that you want. You can have multiple dashboards. So you can actually create multiple different dashboards with different layouts. So for example, if I wanted to, I could go to my little dashboard section, go to edit and I could edit my dashboard. So I could say, hey, I wanna, you know, go here and then I'm gonna put this over here, right? So I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, I'm gonna edit it. I can add users and groups and, you know, just different things. So, it, you know, it depends what you're trying to do, but you can customize it. Now, where you're gonna be ending up, at least the first time you log in, is your home page. So your home page is where you can see all your recent resources and you can also 
access some new resources. So if you want to create a new resource, you can do that right up here. And then you can also navigate to some different main topics, right? There's some also pretty nice tools here. So you have your Azure monitor, so you can monitor your apps and your infrastructure. You can do your security center, your cost management. That's going to be important once you start paying for services. And then of course, technical documentation. So great way to learn about Microsoft Azure. Honestly, spend some time here, whatever topic you come out of the video confused about, go here, do the little walkthroughs. It's like pretty quick. And if you get through it in like 10 minutes, trust me, it's, it's a lifesaver sometimes. Sometimes I say go here before watch the video sometimes, because <laughs> I think they're just going to do a better job. So if you want to customize your Azure portal, there's a couple ways to do that. So you want to go over here to the top to the settings icon. And the first thing that you're going to notice is your portal settings. So uh, the first thing is, is you can specify when you want to sign out, for example. So sign out, sign me out after 15 minutes, 30 minutes. So you, you can change that. You can also change your default view. So if you want the dashboard like I have, well, then all you need to do is instead of having it at home, have it at dashboard. Additionally, you can change uh, this little menu right here. So right now it's considered docked. So I can see it, it's, it's static, it doesn't go away. I can do fly out, so now it's, a, it's not there anymore. But if I click my little hamburger menu up here, it comes back up. I personally like it docked just because I can easily navigate to my different groups of services. Additionally, you can change the color theme. I know that's a big thing for a lot of people. So if you wanna do a light theme, you can do that. I want to do a dark theme, like kind of like a semi white dark theme. It's like a gray theme. And then there is a full on dark theme. If you want a high contrast theme, there is a high contrast white theme and then a high contrast black theme. I personally like high contrast sometimes, but for the most part, we'll just leave it at the dark mode just because it's a little bit easier on the eyes. And then from here, that's really kind of it in the sense of customizing your particular Azure portal. There's a couple other things you can do, like you can customize your profile photo and, and stuff like that. But generally, in terms of customization, that's really about it. So now that we know what the Azure portal looks like and kind of how to customize it, uh, the first thing I want to mention before we leave is from Microsoft Azure, you can basically create new resources, right? And so the resources are basically like your services or your products and stuff like that. So you can see here, I can create a Cosmos database. So I created that this morning. And then there is a SQL database. So these are basically all ones that I've created recently or potentially gone to or navigated. So if you want, you can go here and look at more services and you can learn right away. There's a ton and they're usually categorized by certain topics, right? So if you want storage services, you can just go to there and then you can see about it. Uh, some of these, you can actually uh, hover over them and they might give you a more detailed subscription about what it is. Uh, most of them don't, but you know, it is what it is. You can also search for different services if you don't know which category they're under. But the most important thing is this is where you would basically subscribe to your services. Now, this is going to be important when it comes to accessing the services is we're going to have to understand how these services are organized when it comes to accounts and subscriptions and then something else called a resource group. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually jump back to um, my presentation and we're going to start going a little bit more deeper into how everything is organized behind the scenes and how that it will impact how we interact with the Azure platform. Okay, so the first thing that we need to talk about is a resource group. So as you can see, there's a lot of different services that are offered by Microsoft Azure. A lot of these services, when you subscribe to them, you're gonna to subscribe to them through your subscription, right? I mean, that makes sense, subscription, subscribe. However, a lot of times you're gonna have a bunch of different services under a particular subscription that's gonna be hard to manage unless you have some type of framework to organize that content. So I went on the documentation for Microsoft and I got this wonderful little definition for us. So let's read through it and see what it says. A resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution. That's basically like a project. The resource group can include all the resources for the solution or only those resources that you want to manage as a group. 
you decide how you want to allocate resources to resource groups based on what makes the most sense for your organization. Generally, add resources that share the same life cycle to the same resource group so you can easily deploy, update, and delete them as a group. This will make a little bit more sense when we kind of get into more complex projects. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then also resource groups can store metadata about the resources. Therefore, when you specify a location for the resource group, you are specifying where that metadata is stored. For compliance reasons, you may need to ensure that your data is stored in a particular region. That's probably beyond the scope of us. But the important thing to take away from this is that a resource group is just a nice container for you know, organizing services that are related to a particular solution. I'm gonna call it projects for the time being, but that's just a nice framework. This will come in handy because when we're gonna start using some of those SDKs, software development kits, um, it's very important to understand that this information might be relevant if we want to grab a particular resource. Okay, now comes the fun part. So we also need to understand, because this will make a little bit more sense when we get to the world of authentication, which we all love, we need to understand the hierarchy behind the scene, okay? So right now, we have a single Azure account. A single Azure account can actually have multiple subscriptions, right? So a subscription, I could, like for example, maybe I want a pay-as-you-go subscription, but I also had a free subscription, but it's expired now. I could also, if I really wanted to, I guess I could get an enterprise agreement. I don't think that would make a lot of sense, but the idea behind it is an, an Azure account can have multiple subscriptions associated with it. Again, this is just a nice, easy way to organize everything under the same billing invoice. So especially for companies, that might make a lot of sense to have multiple subscriptions. So maybe one for your marketing department, maybe one for your IT department, one for your data science department, whatever it is, you can kind of have your own subscriptions that are related to specific departments. And then you can kind of track, ooh, I don't know what happened there, but something happened. Oh, uh, but, the idea behind it is it kind of allows you to more easily track your invoices and your billings. A subscription can have multiple services, but normally those services are going to be organized in a resource group. So a subscription can have multiple uh, resource groups that kind of fall under it, or uh, I guess would be connected to it. So the idea behind it, again, is that there's this hierarchy behind the scenes. Your account can have subscriptions, so subscriptions can have services, and those services are often organized into resource groups. So why this is important is a lot of times when we need to access them programmatically, we're going to need our subscription ID. That subscription ID basically tells Azure what resources or what services we want to grab or at least which ones we have the ability to grab based on that subscription. So again, it will make a little bit more sense when we actually kind of go through the process, but I wanna start throwing these ideas out there because I wanna start planting that seed a little bit. Okay, so now that we've done that, I think our next big topic would be no, I think we'll cut off the video here. I think this is enough for that, this video. Yeah, we're doing enough. Yeah, we'll cut it off here. So if you have any questions at this point about just resource groups, subscriptions, the Azure portal, and just kind of how it's all related, by all means, put your comments down in the question, I'm sorry, <laughs> put your questions down in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And then in our next video, I think, we can basically go to the next step, which is actually creating possibly a SQL database. I was debating whether to do that or go through the authentication process, but honestly, the authentication process is a little bit time consuming and we're gonna have to make sure we have certain things installed. So I might do that one after and only, that's simply really only because we haven't really connected to it yet. So once we connect to it, that's when we really are forced to do the authentication. And once that happens, you know, we're gonna have to make sure we have certain things set up. So again, if you have any questions, by all means, put them down in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you in video number three.